whereas the Slifer card was red, so that was easy to see, and the uh, Winged Dragon of Ra was yellow, so they were super obvious to see. You could see them in the deck, you could see them when they were about to draw them, you could see them when they were in the hand, so there's no mystery with them. And the very first match I played against my friend who had Obelisk the Tormentor, I summoned his Egyptian God card before he did. <laughs> so, before he had even had chance to use his new card, I used it to kill him. <laughs> oh, this is so annoying. And I, what I did was I was even more malicious in my attempts because the best way to use the exchange card was to wait until your opponent has a lot of cards so you've got you know good choice in his deck and to wait until you only have one card so that you can dictate which card your opponent gets. So I would intentionally have some shitty card. <laughs> and then when I'd use this, I'd look at their deck, I'd take the best card while you know, their hand, sorry, while at the same time I'd be looking at exactly what they've got. So I would know from that point onwards that there's only one mystery in his hand because he draws on his turn, that's the only card I don't know what he has, so I can pretty much scalp his strategy for the next few turns. And uh, I ended up giving him something shit and I took Obelisk. Uh, because I had quite a few monsters on the field, I summoned Obelisk and I ended up finishing with it, which was kind of brutal. But the, the strange thing about those cards is there was no official rules for them because they were illegal cards. So everybody kind of had their own rules. And the way we played was we played with the rules of the TV show, which was, you know, god cards are god cards. They are fucking gods. They're almost unbeatable. So they couldn't, they weren't affected by anything that was directed at them. Like, they weren't affected by anything that destroyed cards, which included them. They weren't directed by anything. Like, even when you use them in the games, they still can be killed by a move or a spell card or a trap or a special effect that affects all the cards. A good example, if anybody has Raigeki, a super obnoxious and get fun ruining card, that will kill a god card on those DS games. But on with the way we played, it didn't. The only way to kill the god cards was to have a card stronger than them or a strategy that beat them out. And a very important part of this was uh, you were able to debuff them. That was one of the rules we had where, for instance, if you had an equip card that lowered attack points, that was valid because it's not destroying him, it's just a spell card that affects them. And even then, I think that that was a fine line because the, the rules of the god cards, like they couldn't be targeted by spell cards, they couldn't be targeted by trap cards, there were all sorts of weird rules. So for the most, you ended up powering up your card or summoning another god. Or getting creative. Like, uh, a good example of being creative is I had Sly for the Sky Dragon, and if you, you don't know this, his attack power was indicative of how many cards I had in my hand. I also had a card called Infinite Cards, which allowed me to have as many cards as I wanted in my hand, as opposed to the is it 7 limit. And I almost sat there with about 20 cards in my hand. Oh, fuck, it did it. You see that? Sudden death, and he took my, my Zell card. We could be in trouble here, folks. And what happened is I beat my friend after giving him numerous attempts to try and beat me because I used to be quite charitable. Like, I wouldn't attack life points, I'd just end my turn and stuff to give him a chance to come back and just drag the duels out and make them a little bit more fun. And I beat him and he had one card in his hand and the card in his hand was card destruction. But he didn't think to use it. And if he had have used it, he would have won. Because I didn't have the, I didn't have 20 cards left in my deck, so I would have had nothing to draw. So if it had used it, ended his turn, I would have lost. And it was just that notion of you could have beat me if you'd have, you know, done that strategy. But at that moment in time, he didn't think to do it, which must be a, a big old gut punch of a feeling. Oh, this sucks so much dick. I don't want to lose my card. Oh. I'm not gonna. That was tense.
Let's let's play as Mrs. This is getting really irksome now. I suppose it gives me an opportunity to reminisce back when I was... How old was I, what? 13? 14 or something? It was funny too because we were in the, the, the last year, so the final year of secondary school, and we were playing cards, which was really looked down upon by our peers at the time. Like, people got a lot of shit, but I was the kind of guy that didn't give a fuck. I didn't care what people thought. And we started that trend in our school, which was cool. Because it started from being just us, and then it started from being the younger years, and then it got to the point where everybody was playing cards. And I don't know, it was... I didn't expect it, and it was cool. And it was something that we were really passionate about. And even though we were perhaps a little bit too old for it, in the eyes of some people, but, like, who's to tell you that you're too old to do something? Like, I, I've never been a fan of that kind of thinking. And that comes from the fact that my mum used to tell me when I was younger that I was too old to be watching cartoons and, and mentalities like that. You know, you should grow up, you should do this, you should do that. And I, I tried. You know, I tried my best. I... I avoided them and I did other things and I intentionally sacrificed what I wanted to do to try and you know pursue this notion of growing up but I just got to the point where I was like fuck it I want to do what I like and if you don't like what I like fuck you <laughs> um. This is insane. I'm gonna be here all night. Just give us the card. Fucking hell, bitch. Is he gonna use Igweon? He is. But not where I thought. Wow. Goodness me. Fucking all the gas. Oh, what a waste of a card. I completely didn't see the, the elemental. Oh, I'm so retarded. But it's all good. Cards for days. But I'm going to be recording an update video because I want to do an update on the channel. Like, from my perspective, I see it as different to what a lot of people see it, but... I like to keep folks updated, and a lot of times when I do the updates in the videos, it's in series that people aren't watching. For instance, Metro's not doing very well. It's a fun video and everything, but it's just not doing all that great. And I've been talking quite a lot about the channel in those videos, and the problem with that is, you know, if not a lot of people are watching it, not a lot of people are getting the update. <laughs> so, if I make it a separate video, it's an incentive for the people that aren't interested in Metro to check it out and, you know, get up to date with what's happening. And it's just nothing massive, there's no big changes to speak of, really. I'm just going to be mentioning that I am going to be doing some more Payday stuff. There's some Kingdom Hearts stuff coming. You know, I'm probably not going to be getting a next-gen console, so don't expect that. What I am going to be doing, though, is all the next-gen games that are coming out on current gen, I'm going to be covering them in their, you know, more ugly variant. So I will be doing guides to, you know, Call of Duty Ghosts and Battlefield 4... Perhaps I'll do something with Watch Dogs. It'll just not be in super awesome frame rate graphics mode, even though the new consoles are all, all 60 frames, which is bullshit. Because there's PCs running at like 200 frames. And these next gen consoles can't even push fucking 60. Come on, guys. What exactly am I buying here, except for a, a more shiny looking game? I don't know, like, there's a part of me that wants to get a console, but there's just nothing to play. Like, I kind of want to play that new Killzone, just because it looks so different to the other ones, and I, it might actually be good. Like, I, I kind of want to play a Wii U, I just don't want to buy one. Because they fucking, they're trash. Like, I really want to play the Wonderful 101, I really want to play Bayonetta 2. There's a ton of stuff I would really like to see. But I literally cannot... You know, wrap my head around the concept of purchasing a console that... 
is not worth purchasing. <laughs> like, it's it's such a strange notion. Like, out of all the next-gen stuff, the stuff I'm looking forward to most is Dark Souls 2 and Hotline Miami 2. Which, are not, neither are next-gen games. And I'm, I'm looking forward to Metal Gear and things like that, but that shit's not coming out for ages. So it's, inter it's, it's really difficult to get super stoked. I feel the exact same way I did when these consoles came out. I felt like there was still life in my GameCube, you know, like I'd not fully used it. I don't feel that much about this, about the 360 and the PS3 not using them, but I don't feel this, you know, this catharsis and this urge to want to, to get the new thing. Like, I'm kind of comfortable and there's nothing pulling me yet. But I'm hoping that that changes. It's just, you know, they're gonna, there's gonna be so much wrong with them when they first come out and then when Christmas hits there might even be a remodel done or a new model that's thinner or quieter or cooler or cheaper. You know, there's so many things. Like, you're almost a test, like a quality assurance tester when a console first comes out because they never function. And I, I don't see that being any different. But we'll see. We'll see how it works. You know, they're not out for a month or so. So a lot can change in that time. Maybe my opinion will change. Maybe when I go to the convention on Saturday and I get my hands on the pad or I play something there if they have one. That I'm... You know, have an epiphany moment, uh, an awakening, some kind of grand revelation where everything makes sense and next gen is the way forward. Because the YouTuber in me thinks I'm stupid and foolish for not, you know, capitalising on the, the popularity and the, the click fest that's going to be the curiosity of the new consoles. But I didn't really capitalise on Grand Theft Auto V, mainly because it's not really my game. And for me to represent it really strongly would be to go against my own morals of, you know, I do what I believe in. And as much as it's a fantastic game, you know, you ask any of my friends, they will never really know me as a sandbox guy. So it just comes off as a little bit fake. Similar to Beyond Two Souls, right? I played Fahrenheit and I really liked it. You know, I thought it could have been so much better in so many ways, but it was such a different and interesting game that I had a lot of fun with it. But I had no interest in Heavy Rain, because the story of it just did nothing for me. And Beyond Two Souls is the same. It's probably a really cool game, probably a really interesting story. But when I watched footage and when I watched the reviews, there was just nothing there. I felt nothing. I felt dead towards it. There's no ambition, no urge, no impulse at all. I would rather continue playing Birth by Sleep on my emulator, which I'm obsessed with at the moment and having a ton of fun with. Even though I've got two games from Boomerang, which is my new rental service, <laughs> that's costing me money to rent that I'm not playing, which is insane and stupid. Like, it makes no sense. At all. And the two interesting games, Remember Me, which, to be fair, Remember Me, I forgot the buttons, and the game does not have any controls at all, so I'll have to look it up on the internet. And I'm up against an enemy who's new, and you can't hit him because it hurts you. And I can't figure out what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> so I put it on the other night, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can finish this, this is fun. And I couldn't get out of a room. And everything I tried got me killed. And I was like, well, fuck this. I wanted to sit down and relax and play this mindless game, and I couldn't even figure out how to get out of a fucking room. <laughs> so I turned that off. And then the other one is, is Lost Planet 3, which I was a massive Lost Planet fanboy. And the new one... I have absolutely no idea who this game is for. It's kind of like a Mass Effect Dead Space, like Star Trek Generation ripoff. And it's so just, I don't know, like it's a cool idea in a completely monotonous and average way. Like you're part of a rigging crew on a, on a planet that you're attempting to, to terraform I assume. And it's got the whole makings of it being something really, really interesting. But then you play it and it's trying to be a horror game. It's trying to give you the all this characterization. And, 
I don't get it. And this is a series that's main focus before was tons of different crazy robots that all handled differently and had different abilities and were really cool to use. And then this game, you've got one giant one that handles like a piece of shit that you don't want to use and you have to always use. Like, I don't know. It's so strange. Strange games. And I'm probably going to live stream some of them, which gives me an excuse to play them and it, it kind of forces me to do it. And probably do some balls deeps, because I don't see it being guide worthy, seeing as how everything I've done on that game so far has been try to shoot the enemies, there are too many enemies, so spam roll and just roll past them and ignore them. That's literally all I've done. I've played it for about two hours and that's all I did. And it's not a bad game by any standards, it's just there's no pull to play because there's absolutely nothing there that is that interesting to me at this moment in time. I'm in a kind of eclectic mood, I think. And it's same with Remember Me. Remember Me is a, a decent game. You know, the platform is, is functional, if not uninspired. The combat is atrocious, but passable at best. The remixing stuff is amazing, but it's too spread out and too rare. And this is like an hour now we've been trying to get this fucking card. So, this is it, guys. We're not going to get this card. I'm going to get this off of recording. Because this is just not fair on you. It's just me here rabbiting about just random thoughts while we play cards against somebody who's shit. So, I apologise to anybody who feels like they've had their life wasted. I share your pain. But, we tried. We tried his best. Fucking RNG and there's nothing you can do about it. Stupid. I'm getting cursy again, and I, I've been consciously trying not to be so cursy. Mainly because I think when you curse too much, it sounds awful. And I am a major, you know, proponent to, to cursing because I think in context and when used correctly, it can be really funny and impactful. But when it's overused, it can just cringe-inducing. It can be. Well, time to head back. Gosh, that wasn't pleasant. I guess you want me to talk to you, don't you, Gwissus? Hey, babe. What's going on? Oh, I'm not talking. Talk! Can we talk? No? You just stood there like a tart. I have to walk over here? Is this where his Martin is sat down, yeah? He's the headmaster's... Headmaster's? My words are fucked today. <laughs> there you go. He's the He was the headmaster of Galbadia Garden. But they kicked him out. He has a card as well. But you've got to lose a card. I think you've got to lose something specific to, to floor to get him to have uh, another card. And there's a draw point in that room as well, but I'm not that interested. Why does she keep saying that? Oh, wow. It didn't trigger Squall's line last time. That's strange. Interesting. I have no idea why it did that. Oh! Albanian soldiers! Oh yeah, time to kick some ass. With my sword that has a magnum on it. Here she comes, Flo. The Galbadians are here because of you, right? They're after you! Well, technically, maybe. You'd better take full responsibility. It's your fault! Fine, bitch! Backhander. <laughs> we mustn't rely on them. They wouldn't be able to do anything without fighting. I'm going to go and show them my sandals. Yep, he's going to try and reason with them, but they're not going to listen. And look at him. He looks like he's got a bad back. I'll go talk to them. I was waving peaceful signs in Vietnam. Look where that got me. <laughs> a crippling back injury. Ooh, regen. Nice. 
So I'm going to save, and then we're going to kick some Galbadian dick in. <laughs>